lot like fight night when the arena is jammed to the rafters with fans full of the lust of a good, fast fight, screaming for a knockout or perhaps a murder. Yes, it's different, much different. I could tell you of many strange things that have happened within my ropes, many strange stories. I suppose my favorite story is about the fighting O'Hara's. The house was jammed that night, and the bell had just rung for the fourth round. Joe O'Hara came out confident of another win. we planned. I wouldn't be surprised within two months the name of the new champ will be Joe O'Hara. Two months? Hey, Oscar, that seems a long way off. Are you kidding? I wish it was six months. How do you expect to get in shape for a title bout any faster than two months? You know, that guy Johnson didn't get to be champion by accident. He can hit like... No more pictures. Yeah, no more pictures. No more pictures. Unless it's a commercial tie-up. Dad, it's me, J.L. Mike's with me. Come on in. Oh, that was wonderful. Wait, I'm in and I'm the guy that won the fight. <laughs> You're wonderful, too. <laughs> yep, it's pretty good for a young punk. Oh, if you weren't my brother, I'd belt you one. Oh, you Mike. Hey, how'd the audition turn out today? Well, I thought it was all right, but those radio networks, they want somebody with a background. Uh, background, huh? Background? That reminds me. Did I ever tell you about the time? Yes. yes. Now, there's plenty of time for you guys to be yakking later on. J.L., you get out of here and take that piano player with you. And you get in and take your shower. Oh, Do you want to catch okay. cold? I'll see you across the street at Mom Burke. Okay, Good night. While I think of it, I want you to come over to the gym tomorrow afternoon. I want to get you started just as fast as I can. I'll be there. That's it, Mike. Keep him moving. He'll need all the speed he can get. I'll keep him moving. I'll have this pump worn out in no time. <laughs> Funny part of it is, he probably will, too. <laughs> uh oh, copy that. That's right. Well, I was telling you about young Scrawny. He walked towards me in the center of the ring. I walked towards him. I cut him over his right eye. Then I cut him over his left eye. Then what happened? Then he took my knife away. How are we doing, Pop? Okay, but keep your left up. Don't get careless. I fought a guy called One Round Hogan. He knocked everybody out in the first round, everybody but me. Really? Me, he knocked out in the dressing room before the fight. Okay, boys, time. Oscar, tell that punk to keep sticking his left out. You tell him to keep quiet. <laughs> Jail, it's your business if you want to marry a prize fighter. Of course, you're kind of lucky. You got one that can read and write. You know, a girl can always choose a husband, but she has no choice of what goes with him. Like uh, a brother-in-law, for instance. We're kind of sharp today, aren't we? It's a good thing for me you were born a girl instead of a boy like Oscar wanted. I'd hate to have you mad at me. You're right, Mike. Her old man didn't name her after John L. Sullivan for nothing. Huh, Oscar? All right, I think that's enough for today, boys. Thanks, Mike. You do me more good in one workout than the rest of these guys do around here in a month. How about it? Yeah, yeah. Go on, get your showers. Mike, it's a good thing you don't hit like I do, because you hit so much more often, but not as hard. That's because I don't like to fight, Joe. I wouldn't take that punishment from anybody. Not even if they put a piano in the ring? Not even if they put a piano in the ring. Ah, fighting's not such a bad racket, Mike. It's for chumps, boy. Chumps. Oh, thanks. Dad, did you ever stop to wonder what would happen if Mike ever threw a punch the way Joe does? Sure, I've wondered. But there's no use wondering about things like that. Some fellas are born to be fighters and some musicians. And that's all there is to it. Yeah, take me, for instance. I was born that to... That was too bad. Sure, that was too... <laughs> Good punch, Oscar. Well, he had a good left. He was mistaken, Joe. Scotty was never a fighter. I don't know how you can say that, Mike. Mike's right, Joe. That guy was knocked out so many times he sold advertising space on the soles of his shoes. <laughs> come on, everybody, come on. All of you sit over there and I will bring the beer. 
Hey, is anybody hungry? Fine, Duke. Oh, I don't mean anything heavy. Maybe just a snack, like some celery or carrots. Carrots? Yeah, carrots are good for your eyes, Joe. Don't be silly, Duke. Don't be silly. Did you ever see a rabbit wearing glasses? <laughs> Where'd you put the dance, Malaburger? Well, you see, Mike, you see. Ah, oh, this music is terrible. Absolutely terrible. It may not be as good as the kind you teach, Papa Burger, but Mama Burger likes it and so do I. That's right. Yeah, so do the customers. That's why we have it. <laughs> ah, that's good there, Professor. I think this is a waltz, Miss Brannigan. Shall we dance? Well. Oh, he won't mind. Go ahead. Oh, all right. That's the kind of music you teach Mike, huh, Professor? Oh, no, no. <laughs> They look good together, don't they? Seems to me that brother of yours does everything pretty well. Don't he, Professor? Plays piano good, too. Glad to see those two are getting along. You know, sometimes they had the feeling they didn't like each other. Oh, don't you worry, Joe. Your brother Michael is a good boy. He likes everybody. <laughs> and especially you. Thank you, Miss Brannigan. Thank you very much. Oh, I forgot to lock the door. All right, Professor, how about some service? I'm thirsty, I want a drink. No, Mr. Markham, we are closed up. It is after hours now. If these people are just my guests, we are having a private party. Now, please. Don't give me that. I'm a customer, I want a beer. Looks like you've had a couple too many as it is. Why don't you go home and sleep it off? Come on now, be a good fella. I'm all right, Oscar, all I want is some beer. You're all having beer, you and that punch-drunk fighter. Take it easy, Joe. You hit that drunk and it's assault with a deadly weapon. Ask and the professor will take care of him. Please, please, Mr. Markham, I don't want any trouble here. Please, I ask you... Leave me alone. I'll handle it. Look, Swinger. We've had a little bit too much to drink. Now, we don't want any trouble, do we? Listen, Fancy Pants, go on your way. I said I'm gonna have a beer, and I'm gonna have a beer, maybe two beers. It's a good thing he didn't fool with me, or he'd have wound up in a hospital. Yeah, visiting you. Yeah, visiting me. Got it? Remember, just as soon as you touch gloves, you leave with your right. Are you kidding? With my right? Well, he'd knock me clean through the wall. You do as I tell you. Don't telegraph it. Just swing with your right in the first punch. Okay, Oscar. You're the boss. How do you feel, kid? Want you to get a workout. Just box, that's all. Work up a good sweat. Sure, Oscar. Uh-oh. Look who's coming. You've got a nerve coming around here. I don't blame you for being so, Oscar. You either, Joe. I just want to tell you I'm sorry about the other night. You know, I wouldn't act that way if I was sober. You and me and Joe are pals. You better lay off of that stuff. It's not gonna make you any friends, you know. I know, I know. That stuff don't do you any good. Say, you fellas don't mind if I hang around here a while? I'm waiting for a friend of mine. Hmm. Sure, stick around if you want, Swinger. It's all right with me if it's all right with Oscar. Yeah. Okay, thanks, thanks. Okay, boys, time. Oscar, wish we were meeting Tiger Johnson tonight. Okay, Joe, time. Okay, 
right, Joe, that's enough for today. What's the matter, Oscar? I'm not even warmed up yet. I thought we're going at least eight rounds. Never mind who's the trainer, you or me. Well, you're sure a sour puss today. What's the matter, insomnia? Let me see. Go get your clothes on. You and me are going for a ride. Oh, uh, this won't affect my work, will it, Doc? Oh, you can still box. Well, how bad is it, Doc? Well, as I told you, Mr. Brannigan, there's definite signs of injury to the left eye. The right eye seems to be all right. I think the optic nerve may have been injured. But rest is all that's necessary to restore it to normalcy. Well, you could be wrong, couldn't you, Doc? Well, I suppose I could be wrong, but I still think rest is all that's needed. Perhaps another specialist could... We'll uh... take your word, Doc. Come on, Joe. Thanks, Doc. Just let me postpone it for a couple of months, and we'll see. Oh, no, no, Oscar. Not after all the trouble you've gone to to get me a crack at the title. Why do you want to postpone it? Joe, is it the dough? I know why you want that title fight. You want to send that piano playing brother of yours to Europe so he can study some more of that silly music. That's what it is, ain't it, huh? Now, look, Oscar, in the first place, music isn't silly. Second place, Mike's a great guy. Besides, it's, it's my business. I never in all my life heard of such a thing. What if something should happen? Well, nothing's gonna happen, Oscar. You and me are gonna be champs. Before long, J.L. and I'll get married and you'll have a champ for a son-in-law. How'd you like that, you old goat? That was beautiful. Thank you, dear. Such kind of music is nice to listen to, but it will never get us on the concert stage. Now let's go to work, Mike, my boy. Concert stage? You got something in mind for me, Professor? No, not yet. Well, sometime soon. When? Now, my boy, let us not be impatient. There's plenty of time for... You're always saying that, Professor. Now look, I'm as good now as I'll ever be. Give a listen. Absolutely perfect. Exactly as Chopin wrote it. Exactly. Why not? You're a great teacher, Professor. Oh, no, Mike. It is not very difficult to teach someone like you to play the piano, Mike. Oh, you have brains, you have coordination, you know music. <laughs> a teacher, no matter how good, cannot teach even such a pupil as you everything. I'm doing something wrong. No, 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 no. I think perhaps it is... It is something... Look, Mike. Well, it's hard to explain. You play very well. You play everything well. You play all the greatest music that was ever written. And you play it exactly as it was written. You, you play notes. That's bad? Sometimes, yes. Look, Mike. 
Ever since you are a little boy, I know you. <laughs> you are always just the same. You are able always to concentrate. You are intelligent. You are precise. Hmm. You, you should have been an engineer. Are you kidding? After all the years you've been teaching me, I'm a pianist. Now you look, Papa Berger. There's something on your mind. What is it? Mike. Mike, my boy, I wish I could tell you. Certainly you are a pianist. You are as good as the best of pianists you are. But between pianists and musicians, there is a great, great difference. Playing notes and playing music are two different things. Mike, tell me please, have you ever been in love? <laughs> well, I don't know what that has to do with it, but no, I don't think I have. No. <laughs> Just so, eh? <laughs> and also, have you ever been very, very angry at anyone or anything? <laughs> angry? You know better than that, Papa Burger. Why get angry when it's so much easier to do things with, without getting angry? <laughs> Besides, what's that got to do with my playing the piano? Well, now look, Professor. You know that I can play any piece of music that's ever been written for the piano. And you know that I can play it under any circumstances, any conditions. I could play it at Carnegie Hall for society. I can play it in beer parlors for drunks. And I can play it here for my friends. And I don't understand why an emotion like love or hate. Well, what's that got to do with it? Mike, you're anxious really to do things, yeah? Certainly. I'm tired of playing in cheap nightclubs and tea rooms. It's time I made my music pay off. You know what I want, Professor. The concert stage. All right, Mike. I will make for you several appointments. It is possible that I might even someday get you in the Carnegie Hall, as you say. <laughs> that will take a long time. But even if I do, I'm afraid that people will not speak of you as they speak of the great pianists. You could be wrong, couldn't you? Yes, my, my boy. <laughs> I could be wrong. But don't be so sad, Papa Burger. We'll talk about it some more tomorrow. Where's my hat? Where is it? It's time you and Mama Burger start getting dressed. I'll be by to pick you up at 9 o'clock sharp. What for, Mike? For Joe's fight. Tonight's the night my brother becomes the middleweight champion. Oh. You're going, aren't you? Well, <laughs> I don't like fights so much. <laughs> but we like Joe. We'll be ready. 9 o'clock sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Mike. Goodbye, dear. Should I go, Papa? Well, of course, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> In this corner, wearing green trunks, and at 159 pounds, the capable challenger, Joe O'Hara. And in this corner, wearing gold trunks, and weighing 159 and a half, the middleweight champion, Tiger Johnson. McCracken, the judges, Robert and McGuinn, the referee, Frankie Van, and may the better man win. All right, boys, you know all the rules. I want a nice, clean fight. You keep all your punches in fair territory, and when I say break, I want you to break clean. All right? Shake hands and come out fighting. Now look for a right cross, the first punch. Watch it.
Jason Chow. Now, now. A wise guy, huh? I'll fix him this round. Remember what I told you. Hit him with that right. Yeah, yeah. You almost had him that time, kid. Relax, relax. That's it, that's it. You look fine. Oh, I should have gotten him that time. You can sure take it. I had everything in that one. Next round, boy, next round. Now remember, watch his right. Hey, are you sure? Fine, Mike. Fine. Feel good. Swinger just told me O'Hara has a bad eye. Work on it. Get him this time, Oscar. He knows about it. What's going on, Oscar? I want you to break clean and keep those gloves closed. Sure. Okay. Water.
Don't worry, Oscar. It's all right now. Don't worry about a thing. It's all right. Listen, you. Shut up, Oscar. Okay, kid. shared on the fight. It was his one big chance to clean up. The odds were right. If he'd have won, he'd be a rich man. As it is, he's broke and blind. I just come from the hospital. The doctor says an operation may save Joe's right eye. Yeah, we know. Only operations cost dough. And we haven't got any. None. Nobody has. We'll get it. We? What do you mean? All right, I'll get it. Are you planning some sort of a concert tour, Mike? You're not established yet as a musician. It might be years before you would be. I'm not talking about music now. I'll get it the same way Joe did. You mean you want to fight? I want to fight. Well, I'll be. Mike, do you really mean no, it? No, Joe wouldn't let you. He wants you to be a musician. Why, he'd never forget Why does he... he have to know it? You fight under an alias? Why not? As far as Joe's concerned, I'm on a concert tour. It might work. It might just work. Hello, George. Oscar. Now listen, I want you to do me a big favor. The only one, you know. I've got a new fighter. Same size. Middleweight. Sure is good. I want to get this kid started fast. No, 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 no pushovers. We'll fight anywhere you say. I want to build this kid up into a contender just as fast as I can. And take my word for it, you won't be sorry. Did I ever lie to you about one of my fighters? We'll fight twice a week if we have to. What? Your name. What's your name, Mike? Cobra. Kid Cobra. Kid Cobra's his name, George. Yeah, that's it. Fast as a snake. Yeah. Joe, I don't understand it either. Mike goes away on a concert tour and doesn't tell me where he's going. It's very strange. Yeah. Yeah, it is kind of strange. Nothing about him in the papers either? Nothing. Of course, if he's in New Jersey or Pennsylvania or some other place, naturally, people wouldn't tell. Doesn't he write to you, Joe? Oh, no. No, Mike was never the one to write letters. Even when he was in the Army and I was in the Navy, half the time one guy never knew where the other one was. But, but he must be doing okay, all right. Because they tell me he's paid up all the bills around here. This is a nice room, isn't it? Oh, nice. Very nice, Joe. Uh, say, say, Professor, what was that that you read in the paper about that new fighter of Oscars? Guy called Kid Cobra? Uh-huh. Loafing again, you big Irish lummox. Well, it's time for your dinner, Mr. O'Hara. Joe is the name. 
Mr. O'Hara, indeed. <laughs> oh, Professor, looks like my jailer is here. I know, I know. I can take a hint. <laughs> the visiting hour is over. <laughs> uh, let me know if you hear about Mike. Yes, Joe. Goodbye, Joe, my boy. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye, Goodbye. Miss. So I told him. Tell him what? I told him, I said, are you kidding? Hey, I got more brains than my little finger than I got my whole head. No, I mean, uh... Get it from me, Dad. Where's Mike? He's upstairs. Mike, come and get it. I'm ready. Uh, got everything? You know, I like it here, Oscar. Yeah, the solitude. It's a great place for a training camp. <clears throat> Good coffee, J.L. Thank you, sir. Hear from Joe today? Oh, yes. Here. His nurse, Joy White, writes for him. Let's see. He says he feels fine. He wishes us luck, and he wants to meet Kid Cobra. He says uh, he hasn't heard from Mike. Now, oh, and here's a P.S. Mr. O'Hara is doing very well. He's a fine fellow, and we are all very fond of him here at the hospital. Yours very truly, Joy White. Aren't you a little jealous? You know, I gotta look at that little nurse. She's kinda cute. Well, come to think of it, I'm not. You don't suppose there's something wrong with me, do you? Blinded with my footwork. the ladies from our boy Joe. Oh, he's fine. Quite cheerful. Joy still writing his letters? Yes, he seems quite fond of her. You know, you're a funny gal. You keep getting letters from a guy that you're gonna marry and he always talks about another woman. You don't seem to mind. Mind? Well, why should I? I'm glad he has someone to look after him that's pleasant company. Maybe it would be more convenient if he had someone like Joy to look after him from now on. Why, you... Why do you keep saying things like that to J.L.? You've been doing it quite a bit lately. Oh, he didn't mean it, Oscar. No, I didn't mean it, Oscar. I don't know what's the matter with me, lately. I think I do. He's overtrained, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's it. He's overtrained. from the orderly, so you can listen to those terrible fights. Oh, gee, that's fine, Joy. Because tonight's a fight I don't want to miss. Oscar's new boy, Kid Cobra, is fighting Cronin. Do you know what that means? No, I don't. And I don't care either. Well, it means if the kid wins, he's right in line for a fight with Johnson. Isn't he the one who put you in here? I'm sorry, Mr. O'Hara. Well, that's perfectly all right, Miss White. All right, then, Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly the way it's been going up to now. 
This kid Cobra is one of the fastest, most graceful men we've seen in the ring for a long, long time. As you probably know, he has an impressive ring record. 18 victories in 18 fights, but not one knockout. Sports writers are saying that he has no punch, and it seems like this may be true. Several times during this fight, he's had opportunities to put Cronin away, but he hasn't seemed to have what it takes to do it. He's good, that kid, Cobra. You know, there's something familiar about his style. What if I've ever seen him in a place? Round nine, Kid Cobra bounces out of his corner as fresh as ever. Cronin is tired. Both eyes are still badly swollen. Kid Cobra nails him twice, three times with straight laps to the head. And a right cross with the kid, and a left and a right to the body by the kid. Cronin ties him up in a clinch. He looks very bad, and Kid Cobra's hair isn't even must. The referee steps in. He's looking at Cronin's eyes. He may stop the fight. He's all right. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's enough. You heard it, ladies and gentlemen, as I've been saying all night, this boy kid Cobra is like a beautiful boxing machine. But he'll need more than boxing to defeat the champion, Tiger Johnson. The champ is a pretty fair boxer himself, you know, and he can hit which is something that doesn't look like Kid Cobra can do very well. Hmm. If he could only hit... Mike, you were great. But there were at least four times that you could have knocked Cronin out. Why didn't you? Yeah, you had him on a rope so many times, he looked like a yo-yo. There's only one guy I'm planning on knocking out. And before I do it, I'm gonna cut him up like a Swiss steak. Besides, the way I see it, if I don't have any KOs to my credit, it should make it easier to get a fight with Johnson. Yeah, I guess you're right. Go on, get your share. I've got to go down to the store and make a telephone call. I told that reporter on the Times, I'd give him a story, didn't I? Anything you want me to tell him? Just tell him I'm going to end the fight in the 15th round. You mean it's going to take you 15 rounds to knock him out, Mike? I'm not just going to knock him out. Mike, you don't mean... I don't want to talk about it. I thought you had to go to the store. Want me to hang around, Mike? No, you go with us. Mike. Now, wait a minute, J.L. There's something that you and I have got to get straightened out. And we can do it much better if you don't come any closer. All right, Mike. What is it? Well, this little romance of ours, it's, it's got to stop. It isn't that I'm trying to tell you that I don't love you. I do love you. I guess you know that. I love you too, Mike. Well, we both know it's impossible, don't we? You mean because of Joe? I've never been in love before, J.L. I never thought I could be. There's so many things that I want to say to you. There's so many things about you that mean so much to me. But I'd never forgive myself if I took you away from Joe, especially now. But if I married Joe without loving him, that wouldn't make him happy. Oh, yes, it would. He'd be happy just having you around. I know I am. All right, Mike. Will you do me a favor? Sure. What is it? When you fight tomorrow night, don't do anything you'll be sorry for. such a long time, so I came to see if he knew where he was, and I was worried about him. But once in a lifetime, if you are lucky, you hear such Chopin. 
I am three times your age. I've never heard it played like that before. Johnson. Come on, Tiger. How do you feel, champ? Fine. Never felt better in my life. Johnson, 159 and a half. Be sure and see the doctor at 8 o'clock tonight. Right. Where's your boy? He's here, kid. Hello, kid. How do you feel? Great. Kid Cobra, 154 and a half. Be sure and see the doctor tonight at 8 o'clock. Okay. Haven't I seen you someplace before? Maybe. Why, Tiger Johnson, the champ himself. Tiger, I want to tell you something. I've met them all. I've been around the ring all my life. I've met every fighter, every champ. You are, without a doubt. You got a match, Oscar? Why, you... Oscar, I got news for you. What? We got nothing to worry about. Oh, jail, jail, it's good to have you back in town. Uh, say, sit down and tell me about everything. Well, everything's fine, Joe. It's just fine. How about you? Oh, I, I can't complain. Have you heard from Mike? Well, now, Mr. O'Hara, it's time for you to... Oh, Joy, uh, good afternoon to you. Um, I'd like you to meet Miss Brannigan, uh, my fiancé. Uh, J.L., this is, this is Miss White. How do you do? Oh, hello, Miss White. I'm so glad to meet you. Your letters were wonderful. Thanks for taking such good care of Joe. That's my job, Miss Brannigan. Oh, and a good job she does of it, too. Uh, uh, maybe we should all have some tea. No, thank you, Mr. O'Hara. I have things to do. I'm sure Miss Brannigan will look after you. Oh, no, no, wait a minute, Joe. You've been having tea with me every I'm afternoon. I'm sorry, can... Mr. O'Hara. The name is Joe. Joe. Of course it's Joe. Joe O'Hara, the brother of Michael O'Hara. Mike! Mike! Why, you old scab, you. Where have you been? How are you, kid? Oh, I'm fine. Now, look, after all the schools you've gone to, couldn't you have possibly written a fellow a letter? You know me. I'm just no good. <laughs> look, I brought you some medicine. Medicine? Yeah. Uh-oh. I think it's just the kind I need. Irish? Some people may think so. Oh, Hi, kids. kids. <laughs> Get a load of this motley crew. Joe, I brought you some uh, edibles. I hope you enjoy them, everything your heart desires. And I present them to you with infinite delight in a very surreptitious, benign, and truculent manner. <laughs> I say that without fear of contradiction, without reservation. And without knowing what you're talking about. And without knowing what I'm talking That's all I could carry today, Joe, but tomorrow I'll bring you everything for the sick room. Candy and popcorn and peanuts and magazines and newspapers. Uh, and uh, thanks, Duke, but you say the magazines for some other time. Gee, Joe, I'm sorry. Oh, Forgive right. me. It's I... all right. That's... How have you been, Mike? Fine, J.L. You look wonderful. And you look well, too. Oh, oh, Joy. Uh, this is my brother, Mike. Uh, and Duke Hensel. Uh, this is Miss White. How do you do, Miss White? I've, uh... I mean, I'm pleased to meet you. Thank you, Mr. O'Hara. Mike. The name is Mike. You see, there's some people you can call mister, and some people you can't. Funny, nobody ever calls me mister. Gee, I never thought of that. Uh, I've been trying to get her to call me Joe for months. Excuse me, I'll put these in a vase. We gotta leave now, Joe. We only dropped in for a minute. Paul, I'm giving a performance tonight. Yeah, it's gonna be quite a bout. Yeah, about four new concertos. I wish you could hear them. Oh, gee, I'd sure like to, Mike. Is it gonna be on the air? Uh, uh, no, it's, uh, it's gonna be out of town. Oh. Well, good luck to you, Mike. Oh, uh, and listen. Thanks. For what? Thanks for everything. Paying the hospital bills and... Well, everything. Ah, cut it out. I almost forgot to tell you. You're gonna have your operation next week. Oh, Mike, I, uh... What's the matter? You're not scared of a couple of knives, are you? Oh, no, no, nothing like that. It's... It's been a long time, that's all. Yeah, it has been a long time. Take care of yourself, kid. Yeah, good luck. Oh, Mike. Yes, Joe. Uh, have you seen this new boy of Oscar's, uh, this uh, kid, Cobra? 
No, but I've heard about him. You think he stands a chance against Johnson? Johnson will get killed. Take care of yourself, kid. I sure will. Goodbye, J.L. So long. Bye. So long, Duke. So long, Joe. Hey, Swinger. How you betting? Are you kidding? The tiger put this kid away so fast he won't know what hit him. Or how much? You name it, chum. I didn't know there were suckers left like you. What odds will he give me? Four to one like I give everybody else. Okay. How about 50 against your 200? You got a bet, chum. Good shake? Great. <laughs> you better be. Just to remind you that we have wrestling bouts here every Monday night. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. We are proud to present tonight's main attraction. A 15-round bout for the middleweight championship in this corner weighing 154 and a half wearing purple trunks, the capable challenger, Kid Cobra. <laughs> The middleweight champion, Tiger Johnson. The referee, Frankie Van and Maisie Betterman wins. Oscar's boy may be a good boxer, but so is Johnson. He can hit, too. I don't know. All right, now I want a nice, clean fight. You can keep punching until I tell you to stop punching, and then I want you to break clean, you step back without pushing or shoving. Okay? Keep all your punches in fair territory. Shake hands and come out fighting. Oscar. Yeah. Mouthpiece. Huh? Mouthpiece. Oh, oh, oh. Champion is the aggressor, although he hasn't landed a punch. Kid Cobra's very fast, very fancy. He's using his rapier like left very efficiently, but with very little power. It's Kid Cobra again with two light lefts to the head, and he misses with a left. Lands the left to the head of the champion and dances out of range. Yeah, but he can't hit. <laughs> Yellow, just like your brother. about to be careful would it i'm all right i got a little careless it won't happen again watch this right and keep moving 
Kid Cobra looks all right, although the champion really tagged him in the first round. Looks as if Kid Cobra can take it pretty well, though. Why don't they go ahead? Well, do you think anything happened? No, no, no. Hmm? I got his number. I'll get him this round. Kid Cobra, another left to the head of the champion by the challenger. Johnson is short with a left and a right. Kid Cobra lands a hard right to the head of the champion. He's working on those eyes again, not even trying for the jaw. There goes Johnson to a clinch. Not to the last. It's a strange fight, ladies and gentlemen. Kid Cobra so far is much superior in the boxing department. And if it keeps on going this way, there can be no question of his getting the decision. You still think you got a good bat, Swinger? There's plenty more where that came from. <laughs> How much more? 500, the Tiger will take that chump like he did his brother. Okay, let's make it a grand. You're on. Whose brother? Why, that kid Cobra. He's Joe Hare's brother. seem to have changed into a Main Street slugfest. Tiger Johnson and Kid Cobra are hitting each other with everything but the kitchen sink. Whoever said that Kid Cobra couldn't get in there and really mix it was never more incorrect. It's just a matter now as to which of the two fighters will give in first. Tiger Johnson now with a straight left to the head that really rocked the kid. <laughs> marks on the champion's body from here. Kid Cobra is still as fast as he was when the fight started. Johnson's plodding after him, hoping to get him in a corner and drop him like he did in the first round. Why don't you like the tiger? He reminds me too much of my mother-in-law. I know what you mean, bud. <laughs> Oh, 
I'll get the other eye this round. Mike. Yeah. Never mind. Way to stop the fight, Johnson. Be right back. Dan, I think you'd like to know this. Kid Corbett is Joe Heron's brother. Is this on the level? I'm positive. Well, thanks, Swinger. Okay. Uh, excuse me just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. I've just heard a rumor. It's unconfirmed so far, but here it is. Kid Cobra's real name is said to be Mike O'Hara. Joy. Joy, did you hear that? According to this rumor, he's the brother of Joe O'Hara, who, if you recall, met with an unfortunate accident in his fight with Tiger Johnson in this very ring. He's a beautiful it's Mike, to watch Joy. this Kid Cobra. It's like Mike. A well oiled machine. Another left to the head of the I've got to go to him. Right to the head by Kid Cobra. Joy. He slips away again. Joy. He has a rhythmic, graceful style, always on his toes, always pounding away at Johnson. They're in the center of the ring now. The challenger lands a left to the right to the champion's face. Johnson is short with a looping right. Kid Cobra ties him up in a clinch. Joy! Joe, what are you doing out Joy. here? D Joy, Mike is Kid Cobra. You gotta take oh. me to him, get a cab. Now, please. Joe. No, don't argue. Mike said today Johnson would get killed. He didn't mean that. Joy, this isn't just anybody. Mike's my brother. If you think anything of me at all, you gotta take me to him. All right. Betty, get my coat and call a cab. We'll meet you downstairs. Yeah, yeah, and hurry, please. Kid Cobra just connected with a hard right and two left jabs and another right to the head. Cobra landed a straight left at the bell, and that's the end of round 11. Johnson is tired now, and he shows it. Uh-oh, what's this? Let me look at those eyes. They're pretty bad. We'll take care of them. Okay. Go get him. Staggered the champion. Joe, Joe, you've got to stop him. You've got to. You'll kill him. All right, all right, JL, I'll try. Joe, what are you doing here? Mike, you gotta listen to me. Don't try to kill Johnson. Never mind what he did to me. 
It's all in the game. I knew the chances I was taking. Now, please listen to me, Mike. Give my mouth this. Mike, please. Get him out of here, Rocker. Mike. Tiger Johnson, the ex-champion, but... Is Johnson all right? Yes, he's all right. Jail. I should have done it sooner, but I got mad. I'm sorry. All right, all right. Oh, you I don't care who you are. Hey, just... Come in. I'll give you a story later. Get out of here. Mike, what do you mean? Mike, Running off without your robe. You want to catch cold? Thanks, Oscar. Gee, Mike, I'm glad. I'm glad, too, Joe. How'd you get here? I brought him, Mike. You kind of like that guy, don't you? Mike, please. Oh, oh, that's okay, J.L. Mike knows. He's got eyes. Oh, oh, I didn't mean it that way, is it? It's just that you must all know about Joey and me, and that's the way it is. Hey, wait a minute. You mean that you two... I thought that she and him... Doesn't she go with it? Doesn't he go... Well, now I see. Let's have a celebration. Call up Mama Burger. Oh, I could cry into a little beer. Come on, you go get your oh, shower well, here. Get my bandages off. <laughs> Incidentally, my one and only decision to Frederick Chopin. 